All right, everyone, the latest round of polling has come through. Right now, Biden is crashing and burning a bit. It's mostly because his disapproval has spiked recently by several points. Uh, he's back to his old holding position, actually, from uh, mid last year. When things were going particularly bad, he went beyond that. What I explained at the time was that you're going to tend to regress towards that approval and disapproval level. Roughly a 15-point gap overall. He's, he's approaching that now. It's right now at 11. Uh, because there's no redeeming facet to the administration. He's not doing anything particularly right. By the way, the cat is very frustrated because I kicked her off the table because she was menacing her sister here. Um, likewise, Trump right now is enjoying a rise in his, in his uh, polling within the Republican Party uh, for the nomination for 24's election. And I'm beginning to think that these two things, to some extent, not completely, but to an extent, are correlated. What I'm thinking is that if Joe Biden really fucks up, since Trump is seen as the anti-Biden, much like Biden was literally branded as the anti-Trump in 2020 when he, Hong Kong, won the election fair and square by 10,000 trillion votes, or whatever it was, um, because of the twain nature of those two heavily sloganeered campaigns, that effect, I think, is still in sway. And so at times when Joe Biden is doing better, which it's been a while, um, Trump loses a little bit of that luster, a little bit of that attention. If Biden fucks up, as he has been lately, of course, you have him alienating the left by saying, look, I've done all I can at the executive level on guns, so now Congress has to act. That's not, probably not what the uh, leftoids want to hear, uh, Joe. It may be correct, uh, you've already gone well beyond your authority, but uh, they don't want to hear that. You shouldn't have even addressed it at all. Uh, we've still got uh, onerous levels of inflation. You still have a problematic economy. You have an increasingly problematic diplomatic stage in the world. And I think that a lot of people, some of who did genuinely vote for Biden, having voted for Trump before, so the Rust Belters especially, go back towards Trump because they remember the better times uh, that we had under Donald Trump. They remember 2017, 2018, 2019 for the most part, and they remember a time that was uh, stable, relatively. You didn't have the diplomatic issues, you didn't have the inflation, you didn't have most of these problems. It was at the ass end of Trump's administration that COVID rears its ugly head and that fucks with the economy. After two years, Biden really hasn't put the cat back into the bag. And some people, because voters can be fickle, have, they think they've given him the chance and he's failed. I think that at some point he cracks through his old soft floor in approval polling um, and goes to a lower soft floor. I think that soft floor has receded some, especially in the wake of the last election. Dems took the Senate. Biden is chuckling about it and saying, well, the voters have made up their choice. They've decided to stay the course on, you know, the slow march towards globalistic tyranny because they're stupid. But uh, <laughs> again, there were shenanigans there, too. Yeah, you look at the popular vote count and then the uh, House results and you'll see what I mean. What happens, though, is that the maverick hardcore candidate, which is Trump, seems to benefit from any reduction in Biden's approval. Um, of course, not if it's a, an impact from the left. In fact, the correlation we might even use as a measure of which voting bloc is pissed off at Biden at the time. Left-wing voters, um, who clearly, they're not flocking to Trump, so you wouldn't expect a subsequent rise, or the union Dems slash independents who tacitly support Biden, at least on some parts of his ideology, who start disliking him because either he didn't do enough or he did the wrong thing. Uh, DeSantis, by the way, therefore his fate is slightly tied with Joe Biden. If Joe Biden improves and his approval goes up, his disapproval goes down and things go back to normal, he may seem more viable because then maybe people start thinking, well, the hardcore uh, candidate, the, the, the ultra MAGA candidate, maybe we want something softer than that, something more polished or, you know, what, however they're going to cast off DeSantis next in his own campaign. Whereas if Joe Biden really screws the pooch, if we end up with more of a banking crisis, which, which we bailed out, the FDIC having to dispense 15%, by the way, of its funds on the Silicon Valley debacle. So yes, the taxpayers are on the hook, by the way, at the moment for tens of billions of dollars. And we, we did effectively bail out another major bank. And people just didn't realize it because of the restructuring of how they did it. How wonderful. That's, that's totally, totally wonderful. Yeah, no new Occupy movement, though, you'll notice. That's because the dude in the White House has a D after his name. They don't want to rock the boat in that case. Um, you've got various potential problems. That, 
You've got diplomatic issues that could pop off. Taiwan, the Korean Peninsula, uh, China and Brazil just reached a deal to a uh, trade in uh, Juan, actually, so BRICS is consolidating. I don't think they're going to be able to get India on board anyway, though, so it's, I think that their five-nation alliance may end up being four nations in the end. So they end up uh, ending the petrodollar internally, but they lose one of the most valuable players on their team in the process. That's entirely possible. Or India could be the Turkey of Asia uh, at some point. They could end up uh, doing the line-straddling thing, much like Erdogan does. We'll wait and see. Any of a number of economic things. Inflation is sticky. The Fed is raising rates, thus hazarding against the banking sector. Um, anything could go wrong at the moment. You could say, well, it's already going wrong. Yes, clearly, uh, and Biden's approval is taking a hit. How much of a hit does it take now? How does that impact the Republican primaries is anyone's guess, but I'm beginning to see, what I'm saying is I'm beginning to see the two numbers correlate. The rise in Trump over the last week directly correlates with the drop for Biden. Therefore, I think that's right independent voters uh, who had switched over sides because of mean tweets who are being reabsorbed into the Trump camp. Well, that's terrible news. If, if Trump even approaches 50 uh, going into next year, uh, he becomes effectively undefeatable. Uh, just so that uh, people who support DeSantis are aware, that's basically the magic number is probably 47 or 48 or somewhere around there. Likewise, Joe Biden's goose would be cooked. Um, as his approval falls, he potentially also has a problem. He faces calls to stand down. Now, right now, Warren has stood down. She's saying, yeah, I re-endorse Biden, that's fine, he intends to run probably, and she's going for her Senate seat. So that's one of the big potential players uh, that's out of the game uh, for the Democrats. If Biden wants to run, it wouldn't be booty judge or something like that challenging him. That leaves a fairly sparse field. Things could implode on either end of the political spectrum, though. You saw the Manhattan grand juries not even convening till the end of April. They're taking a one-month-off hiatus. Well, only four more weeks blew in on, I suppose. Guess they're waiting until closer to the election to try to uh, spring their trap or you know, whatever the fuck they intend to do with that uh, kangaroo court nonsense of theirs. Uh, but the correlation, I think we need to study this more over the coming months as we hopefully get, by the way, better polling. Uh, some of the polling doesn't even have the number of people polled. Those polls are useless, so ignore them. It includes the latest by Fox. Uh, but looking at this, if we find a stronger correlation, it, sh it points to the reabsorption of Trump's soft support, and it's jettisoning from Biden. It would be the, exactly the reverse that led to some of the change in the electoral map in 2020. It would be the opposite of that, in which some of the former Trump voters, but soft supporters, had gone over to Joe Biden or stayed home. If we see that reversed, 2024 gets 10 times more interesting. That's about all. Peace out.